Hello everybody! Welcome back! It's been a while. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about aircrafting codes. In particular, we're going to be talking about hamming codes, we're going to be talking about weights, and we're going to also be talking about hamming distance, and how these things all tangle themselves together, and what kind of properties do we get with these hamming codes? Because they seem a little bit... it sounds kind of funny if you haven't heard of the term before. Uh, hamming codes are traditional air correcting code which gives us a lot of interesting properties and they're very very prosperous over the field and they're probably the most simplest type of air correcting code because they offer one error correction and i'll explain what that is in about a minute or so and you can use them to play around with your friends and show them that you can have magical powers using the powers of mathematics <laughs> But yes, it's seriously, it's fun. You can always try it out on your friends, and they'll be like, Whoa, how the heck did you figure that one out? And then uh, just make sure you practice it in your head, or else it won't really work that well, because they'll be seeing you doing math. Okay. So, let's just get me a marker out from here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's get a black one here. Okay. Black. Here we go. Okay, first we're going to start off with talking about vectors. If you don't recall those guys, we're going to be talking about integer space vectors, i.e. a vector has the form, I don't know, let's say a0, a1, a2, all the way up to, I don't know, let's say an. This is a vector. Sorry if the glare is over there being a little bit of a funny thing. It has a way of doing that with a stupid camera. Anyways, so we have a0 up to an. Fun. <laughs> Anyways, so the vector here will be, say, we'll be putting in over some sort of alphabet. And we're going to be using Galois fields to do this. Or you can just think of it as number of symbols. In this case, we're going to be only talking about Galois field 2 or finite field 2. Uh, in particular, if you want to know what this means, it just basically means that we're going to, going to have a set with 0 and 1 in it. So... The only things that could be in these tuples are zeros and ones, i.e. binary. So you can say this guy up here is a 0, 1 to the n for its language. So if this was... So this guy is sitting inside of this set. Okay. With that, now we get to talk about weight. Weight is actually not that hard of a concept to explain. We're just going to use this guy up here and explain it in probably a much easier spot to explain it. Uh, okay, say we have an example here. Let's have a 1, a 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, good. Okay, so we have three 1s in it. The weight of a vector is the number of non-zero positions in the vector. So, for example, if we said, and this is denoted by the weight of x, where if this was x, this is a vector x, that's another vector, uh, this guy would have weight of 3, because there's 1, 2, 3. Three ones in it. So the weight of x is 3. See, pretty simple concept. And surprisingly, you get some interesting results from using these. Okay. Now we have our definition of what a weight is. A weight is the number of non-zero positions in are vectors. Okay. Now we're going to talk about hamming distance. Or just call it distance. Okay. Hamming distance we're going to denote as d u v where these are two vectors and what we what we do with the hamming distance is we check for the number of positions where they don't agree. I e Say we had two vectors here, and let's do 0, 1, 1, 0, and we had 1, 1, 0, 1. How many positions here don't match? Now let's pull out my other marker here, just to make this a little bit more a little more interesting. Now where the heck do these things agree? There's two of these guys. Okay, so these guys don't match, so let's just underline all the ones that don't match. This guys match, these guys don't match. These guys don't match. So you get to say, the dis if this was u, and this is v, then we say the distance of u and v is 3. Because there exists three coordinate positions that don't agree. 
I mean, if you added the two guys, you'd get yourself a weight that would sit somewhere rather interesting place. And in fact, let's just add them, add them just to see what the heck we're going to do. Because we, cause we get to do this later. Okay, let me get my black marker out again. Okay. Well, let's just make it green. Green's always fun. Okay. So, let's add these two guys. You just do binary addition, no carries. I use the XOR. Okay, if you don't know what an XOR is, basically just add the ones and zeros, and if it equals two, you make it zero. It's modulo two. Okay, so zero and one. If we added u plus v, what do we get here? Zero plus one, that's a one. One plus one is zero. One plus zero is one. And that's a one. What's the weight of this vector? It is... 3 also. Rather interesting property there. And we're going to come to that later. But, look at here. We have three vectors, so we can say the weight of u plus v is equal to 3. And in fact, this is no coincidence. In fact, the distance, let me just write it down here, just to make it a little more clear. Where the heck is my black marker? Oh, here we go. Black marker. <laughs> black marker here. Okay. In fact, this is equal to, and keep in mind this is in binary, but uh, I'm just going to say the general form is, whoops, that should be u and v. Okay, so the distance of u to v is equivalent to saying the weight of u minus v. Or in binary, just because negative 1 is 1, we can say this. So, rather interesting property here. So we get the weight of u plus v is equivalent to the distance here. And keep in mind that this actually has a property where you could do the following. Uh, this is also equal to dvu because it's a metric. If you don't know what a metric is, a metric has three properties. It has this property where you can commute the elements inside the metric. Uh, it has the property that you can have the triangle inequality. I won't mention that here because this is we don't really need it right now. And it also has a property where if you take any one of these guys and you take it to itself, you get zero. With that, now we have ourselves a Hamming distance. This Hamming distance comes very handy, and we're going to use that for figuring out how the heck Hamming codes work. Okay. And just to make this clear, we're not going to really talk about the specific technical details of the Hamming code, because it can get quite sophisticated. And I don't really have as much time as you'd wish to discuss all the matrix theory and the uh, common torques that's going on underneath the hood. So we're just going to use it as a toy. But we're also going to construct it. So, so you'll get to see it and you can actually learn how to use it. Because this is going to be a basic lesson on Hamming codes. Okay. Now, if you've seen yourself a Hamming code, you'll look it up on Wikipedia or something. You'll look at this stuff and you'll get something that looks sort of like this. It'll say something about, I don't know, some sort of 741. It might say another one. It has a bunch of them. In fact, there's a general form for these guys. This is the most traditional one. What this says is this is the length of the vector of any vector, vector sitting in the code. And this is the number of rows, i.e. the dimension of your matrix. And in fact, this is a matrix. The seven four guy. When we put the generator matrix in, you get a seven. You get four rows. You get three seven columns. Seven columns, four rows. Make that clear. And we'll have also another property that we have to also explain. Okay, so it's the number of rows. Just this is the the simplistic way of thinking about it. This is actually a set because you can actually perform any linear combination of the rows, and you use that in fact to generate all the codes. So you enumerate all the possible pairs, triples, and four pairs. So what you do is effectively, we have a matrix with four of these rows. So there's going to be a matrix here. It has four rows in it. You can add any two, any pairs here, and you get yourself all possible codes. And why is this handy? Because you use it. In fact, this is, comes in a very interesting way, and we'll actually see why. Okay. Now with the 7-4 Hamming code, you get an accomplishment that is actually kind of cool. Okay, 
A Hamming code, in fact, has distance. We're just going to say D. In fact, I should add that as a tuple here, just because I'll make it clear. This has also another one here that says three. That means the Hamming distance on any one of these words, these code words, I, any one of these rows or any code word that sits inside of this possible linear combination of rows, i.e. any common multiple of these, and in binary we'll just be dealing with adding the rows. But in ternary and whatnot, you have to also deal with the multiple. But let's not get into those details. We're just going to talk about straight binary. So we're going to add any possible row, any linear combination of the rows. And you get any code, and all the codes have distant, any possible pair of codes, any possible combination of the codes, has a distance of 3. And what does this say? In fact, there is a theorem that states that the number of errors you can correct is d minus 1 over 2 with linear codes. In fact, you can generalize it in most cases. Uh, you get yourself 3 minus 1 over 2. So you get 2 to 2, two that is t is equal to 1. So this guy can correct one error. So any one of the positions, you can select any one, flip a bit, or add a, like, set one of the variables, or remove one of them, and you get yourself a correction. So you can correct any one of the one positions, which is rather cool. Okay, so with this information, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what the heck an error correction is versus an error detection. Because they're two very different concepts and, and you want sometimes to have one or sometimes you want the other one. Okay, so error detection is where we're talking about trying to detect an error. And it, sometimes in, in practice you'd want detection because you'd want to retransmit the signal. You can think of it pretty much like, say, if you wanted a flag, they'll say, oh, this transmission has an error in it versus... Hey, I want to transmit it, and I want to actually correct it. Uh, that's the difference between transmission and error correction. Because transmission is all about sending a bunch of information over a channel, and we can talk about it in binary, over some sort of probability distribution. Okay, so we have detection, which basically means if we detect it, we can resend it again. For error correction means that if we're given any received word, we should be able to fix it using a simple algorithm that fixes it and turns it back into what it originally was, i.e. one of these code words. And one of these code words sits in that side of that matrix, any linear combination of those rows that we saw in the matrix. And we're going to come to that matrix, well, the 7-4 Hamming code matrix, and explain that. And what happens here is, say we're given, I don't know, uh, We'll, we'll use this as our example, but we're going to build on top of it by getting the Hamming code. Okay, so say we're given, I don't know, let's say 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, which is in fact a code word in the Hamming code. What we're going to do is say, say, I don't know, for some reason a photon flipped off one of these bits. Oh, okay, flipped offs aren't really bad for this. But say we, we did this, uh, say I arbitrarily chose this guy, just right now, to really make this clear how simple this is. Okay, I just turned the 0 to a 1. Say this is one error, so that's one error right there. 